What better way to start out this video than with the Kenner 1979 Alien? Next we have the big 15 inch Darth Vader. Very much just like the um, regular size action figures as far as articulation goes. The head will turn, legs go straight up and down, arms move straight up and down. Nothing in the knees, nothing in the arms. Or I should say the elbows. Head does turn. Main thing with these guys was just their size. Next, from the TV show Mork and Mindy, is Mork, the, from the late Robin Williams. His gigantic backpack here. He does still talk, sort of. As a little kid, this was one of my favorite TV shows. Next, we've got the Star Wars ripoffs. This is, uh... The Night of Darkness on the left, and this is Zem 21. Complete Star Wars ripoffs. It's your C3PO and Darth Vader characters. I love how goofy he looks. He's like a combination of Darth Vader and the movie Spaceballs. As far as articulation goes, there's not much on Zem 21. His elbow does move like very, very slightly. I'm trying to get his leg to bend here. I don't think his knees do bend. I'm not going to force it because he's that hard, really hard plastic. He's kind of brittle. He's getting a little weak in the waist. And of everything shown so far, here's a size reference. Next we have the Keeper from Star Trek. This is a Mego figure. The only Star Trek Mego doll I ever owned. My brother had the uh, crew of the Enterprise and the little Enterprise playset. This is the only one I ever had. The only one I ever really wanted too. Never much of a Star Trek fan. Loved his face though. And you can see he's the smallest so far. Now up next is the G.I. Joe Talking Commander. Now I never had this guy as a kid. This one still does talk slightly. If you listen closely, you can understand him. Love the flocking on their hair. This one's still pretty tight. His waist is a little loose, but his arms and legs are good. And there's your size reference. Up next is the Karate Men. Now this is actually technically a game, I guess, but they're action figures nonetheless. So I included them. This is how they operate. You just press the buttons in the back. They'll do a chop, a punch, and a kick. And one of the reasons I brought these guys out right after G.I. Joe is let me bring him in here. A lot of people mistake him saying that these are just articulated G.I. Joe dolls, and no, they're not. They're slightly smaller. You can see I've got him standing on the base right next to him. You can see the facial sculpt is different. Aurora, Aurora, yeah, I can't even say that word. They did these completely original. No scar on the guy's cheek like G.I. Joe has. Now that brings us to JJ Arms. This is a toy of an actual real man who existed. He's, he's still alive today. He's uh, in the Private Investigators Hall of Fame. He lost his arms in an, or his hands in an accident when he was a child. I believe it was with a Bangalore torpedo. And he has hooks and it didn't slow him down. He became one of the world's greatest private investigators. You see his hook op operates. The gun will flip back. Now here's his briefcase. See the JJ arm symbol on it. And these are his different hand attachments that you can put on. I happen to have two of the flashlights. Uh, there's two suction cups, there's two regular hands, there's a, like a knife blade. 
all around a really cool toy and like I said based on a, an actual man here JJ you can hold your case and JJ stands slightly taller than Amigo right about the size of his M21 from Mattel, Pulsar, and his enemy Hypnos. Nobody knows anything about these guys because Mattel never released any stories about them. Now, he should have like a crystal clear chest. Mine is all clouded, but you can see the inner workings in there, sort of. The way he works is when you turn him over, this switch needs to be in the down position for him to make sparks. If it's up, the sparks will be off. Down, they will be on. And on the side here, just press this lever in, the wheel will spin, and you can see it sparking. He also came with a helmet, but I do not have the helmet. His arms are articulated at the elbows ever so slightly. They'll bend. His knees will bend. I've always liked them. Pretty, really cool looking stuff. Okay, Pulsar. Pulsar's claim to fame would be his uh, crystal clear chest and that mug. Look at that mug. Anyway, taking off his shirt or opening up his shirt, you can see right through his chest, there's a very large button on the back when you press it. If you watch his heart and lungs, they operate. Now also in his abdomen were little tubes with blood that would circulate, but that dries up through time. The other thing that he does is his head will lift up and you could put mission discs in there. I don't happen to have any of the discs at the moment, but they would just fit right in there. So you can pretend you give him different assignments. And that's Pulsar and Hypnos. You can see Pulsar is pretty big. He stands just beneath Darth Vader. Now I included these just because I had the Cylon as a kid and I really liked it. Today I'm not terribly fond about these guys, especially the Colonial Warrior. That's all that the Cylon does is when you press down the button on his back, a little the Cylon eye will light up and you can move it with the switch. Um, they came with little laser beams sticking out of their guns that would light up too. Okay, I'm going to see if you can... I don't think you can even see it. You can see the eye tracing back and forth and it's lit up red there. Anyway, if it was too, if it was dark, you could see this. They're starting to get a little dim because they're getting old. Here is the Colonial Warrior. Now, I don't know if you guys will know the toy Captain Laser from the 60s, but that's all that this is is a recycled Captain Laser doll. The Cylon is the exact same thing, just with a different head put on it. Kind of cheap. I mean, the, the show Battlestar Galactica had no nothing that looked like this. And there's Captain Laser. Pretty cool, though, I guess. Size reference, you see they're slightly smaller than Pulsar and Hypnos. About the size of G.I. Joe. Now, my favorite toy line from the 70s was Six Million Dollar Man. Here is the entire run of action figures minus the Fembot. I don't have her in this shot here. My favorite of all, the Bionic Bigfoot. There's his inner chest panel that Steve Austin can grab a hold of and lift him up. Steve Austin, this doll is in, I should say, action figure, since we're doing the action figure video. Anyway, this he's in incredible shape. He's got his socks, his original socks. You can see the skin is still on his arm, although it's all dry rotted. I think they all pretty much are in these days. All right, moving on to Jamie Summers. Here we have Steve's engine block. Look how dusty this shelf is. I'm going to actually be wrapping these guys up soon because they're just standing here collecting dust. There's Oscar Goldman. Here's his dusty briefcase. And on the other side, when you open it correctly, I do have the files with 
the file papers and his headphones. Here are all of the pieces for Maskatron. All of these guys are 100% complete. His suction cup arm. There, this is Maskatron's face. This one here is Oscar Goldman, which looks totally different from the doll itself. Steve Austin is quite different. Well, he looks better than the Oscar Goldman. See, here's a side by side. You can see it's a completely different sculpt. Then we'll check out the uh, Steve Austin next to him. Of course, the um, Maskatron one has two eyes. And that is the Six Million Dollar Man collection. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this short video on just some of my favorite 70s action figures. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.